where you want it. Bay 12, please. Hello there Transformers fans and welcome back to another Bay 12 video review and today we are reviewing the long anticipated leader class The Fallen from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. He looks awesome. He definitely lives up to the hype. Number 91 in the Transformers Studio Series numbered line. You got some awesome artwork there on the side as well. Full front artwork on the box. Artwork on the side. And then there he is in both his robot and his weird space jet spider looking mode on the back. I don't know. To me, to me it looks kind of like a spider. I, I'm not going to get too hung up on the alt mode. Yes, he's a transformer. Yes, he should transform into something. But at the same time, we never saw alt modes for the Seven Primes in Revenge of the Fallen. So, and according to Jetfire, uh, his father transformed into nothing. So, I, the continuity of the Bayverse is all over the place. We all know that. Who knows? Anyway, he has an alt mode. So, that's pretty much it for the box. And here he is in his robot mode, and he looks fantastic. He looks really, really good. Very screen accurate. I love that they got the bright blue on whatever that is. I, I honestly don't even know what to call that. Uh, very articulated. He comes with his spear this time. Now, it's not the first time that the Fallen figure has come with his spear. The Hunt for the Decepticons version did come with it and even came with a better head sculpt with a removable face, much like this one does. However, he was blue, solid blue. The whole thing was blue with some other bright blue colors. It was not a very screen accurate color scheme, which was weird because Hasbro finally did like a really solid release of the original The Fallen mold, which was a pretty decent mold, by the way, but then they made him blue. The first one was green. He got an, a bright black and orange release based off of his appearance in the comics, um, which wasn't the movie version of the comics, the original appearance from The War Within, just a color scheme based off of that. And then, uh, then we got him in blue, which was weird because... I, I don't know why Hasbro did it that way. Um, it, it took over 10 years. It took about 13 years for us to get a proper The Fallen for Revenge of the Fallen with his spear, really good screen accurate display with a removable face. I don't know why it took Hasbro so long to finally do the, deliver this figure properly, but I'm so glad they did because this is the best version of The Fallen by far. It is so good. Even with his weird arm bar sections that come off of his back, which was an odd design choice, but even those work really cool, especially with the articulation. Now you can have them off, you can just take them off entirely. You can have the bars disconnected and down to the side to give you more mobility with this figure, but it is pretty cool that they incorporated it into the design and I'm, I'm glad they did because it would have been inaccurate without them, honestly. So here he is, he's looking very good. Um, first and foremost, he does come with this awesome backdrop here, which is Egypt. So go ahead, stand him on that. So you can see how he looks on his studio series background. I'm loving that they're still doing the backgrounds. It's a very nice thing. Don't stop doing that. Here he is next to the studio series Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, his very loyal servant, which is a weird way to think about Megatron as one who serves somebody else. I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes he ends up serving Unicron, but it's not by choice, right? So it's it's weird that in this continuity that he is subservient to somebody else because Megatron does, serves nobody. But anyway, there he is next to Megatron. And also for comparison, here he is next to the Jetfire powered up Optimus Prime from Studio Series, which 
getting him to stand with the big jet fire cannon is a little tricky. So you can see how they stand next to each other. Very nice. Very, very tall. I love, I love the height of this guy. He is very tall as he should be. He's, he's got a good presence to him, I think. And that's pretty much it for that. In robot mode, he is very articulated. Head is on a ball joint. Fully articulated shoulders, especially when, you know, the weird arm bar section is not attached. Um, in and out, even right here, you have a shoulder joint right there. You have a bicep joint. And I love, and, and I just pulled it a little too far, which detached this. But I love that as you articulate, this section also articulates, which is so cool. Uh, double jointed elbows, wrist joints, and wrists can go in and out. Nothing at the waist, hips, and they go in and out. Single jointed knees, you also have a swivel at the knee joint. You have a swivel at this secondary knee joint. Now it doesn't bend forward and back. And ankles, you've got forward and back on the ankles, side to side on the ankles. And you'll notice when I picked it up, his feet didn't collapse on themselves like with the original mold. Now I know a lot of people didn't actually like that, I didn't mind it. I didn't think it was a big deal, but it's nice that they did away with it just so you don't have to deal with it all the time. But you can collapse his feet if you want to, which you will for transformation. And then, of course, for his back section, um, we're going to actually detach this ball joint here just, just real quick. But uh, as you can see, this articulates in and out. You've got a ball joint right there, a ball joint right here, which pegs into the back of the arm here. And you have this cool extra hinge few hinge joints right there that give you all this extra movement which is really awesome I, I love the articulation of that click that back into place here is his spear which to get into his hand you actually have to disassemble it comes apart in two bits there but it's nice and long it looks really cool Real quick before transformation, you can take his face off. Pops right off, just fits on over the head there. Really nice screen accurate head sculpt and the jaw opens and closes on that, which is very cool as well. All right, now on to his weird spider space jet mode. We're going to start by untabbing these sections off of his back. We, you can remove them all the way if you want just to make things easier. You don't really need to, but you can just pop these out. They, they do pop in and out really easy. We're going to put his face back on. Also, before I forget, there we go. And then we're going to bring this whole section off of his chest up on this hinge and we're going to cover up his robot mode face like so. Next we're going to bring this hinge back with his legs and that's going to tab in to his back. Fold these little pointy shoulder bits in, rotate that to the back, get those out of the way for now. And then we're going to come over here to the legs. We're going to rotate out, rotate out, collapse the feet, bring up the legs like so. As you can see, just extend all that out. Do the same thing over here, rotate out, rotate out, collapse the feet, bring that up, kind of get that all out here. Rotate the shoulders in, rotate the forearms up, like so. Take the leg here, there's a tab right here on this part of the knee. That's going to tab right here into the armpit, basically, just to kind of secure the legs to the body of 
the space jet mode. Next, we're going to fold the forearms down. There's a tab right here that's going to tab into this section of the shoulder right there. Like so. Get that one up there. Go. And then we'll go ahead and tab that knee back in place since it decided to come undone. All right, put this back on. We're almost done. Next up with these little bits right here, this, this little, where is it? This little tab right there is going to tab right into the side of the ankle right here. So we're just going to maneuver that, work with the articulation just to get it lined up and tabbed into place. Do the same thing over here, get it lined up and it'll be tabbed into place. And there you go. There he is in his weird space jet mode thing. It's, it's these weird cross sections that make it kind of look like a spider to me. I don't know. Like I said, it might, I might, it might just be me being weird. It is a weird alt mode. It is a very, very strange alt mode. Honestly, I think I prefer the way it looked with the original mold just a little bit more than this one. Personally, granted, I'm not going to be displaying this guy in alt mode. He never appeared in an alt mode on screen, so I honestly, it's just kind of redundant to me. I think it's cool that he has one, but also very unnecessary just because we don't see one and we don't know if he actually can transform or not. I mean, it's assumed he can just because he's a Cybertronian, but at the same time, it's we, we never see it happen, so... As cool as it is, it's a nice thing they included it, but I'm not going to get hung up over the alt mode when I don't really think it was necessary to begin with. It's nice that they did it, but at the same time, you know, eh, it, it's just not for me. Not for me. And that's okay. But what do you think of the alt mode? Let me know in the comments what you think of his weird space spider jet alt mode. Let, let me know. Do you like it? Do you prefer the other alt mode more? Or are you like me and you just don't really think it matters all that much because he never displayed an alt mode in the show. He never even displayed an alt mode in the comics, I don't think, where, where they did the prequel comics um, for the movie anyway. So, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's review featuring the, tra the Transformers Studio series, The Fallen, from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Overall, a really solid, great figure. I love all of the unique articulation with this figure. I love that he comes with his staff. And I, before I forget, you can incorporate his staff into his alt mode, but it only makes it look weirder. You split it in half, you tab it in onto his legs right here, and it just looks more strange. I, I think I think it looks even more strange with the staff on there, but that's just me. Stay tuned for more Bay 12 video reviews. Stay tuned for more Transformer reviews. Make sure you like and subscribe and follow us on social media. What was your favorite Studio Series figure released this year? Was it The Fallen or was it one of the other figures? Was it one of the Studio 86 figures? Let me know in the comments. And what's a figure that you're looking forward to next year? I'm very much looking forward to the Rise of the Beast figures. I love Bumblebee. The trailer for Rise of the Beasts looks pretty good. I'm very excited for that movie, and I'm very excited for the figures that are going to come out for it as well. Check out our monthly Bay 12 live sales that we like to do here on our YouTube channel. If you're local or visiting from out of town, check out our physical location inside the shops at Willow Bend Mall in Order 66 Multiverse. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. Transform and roll out. Game over, man. It's game over.